Hello everybody, let's assume that you've always traditionally bought 50 to $80 cheap shoes that are falling apart and cracking every six months to a year, and you wanna step up into nicer shoes. What do you wanna get? Well, this video will help you decide what you should buy. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of My five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell quarter. Here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. So the reason I'm doing this video is I've actually gotten this question multiple times. I got this last night at a networking event and he's like, I'm tired of these $50 shoes. He showed me how they're cracking. They look cheap. You know, sometimes these are people that are maybe transitioning a, a point in their career. They want to step up their image as well. And you know, a lot of the times people are telling me I have some money to spend, but what should I get? So I'm going to help you choose what kind of shoe or shoes you should be getting now. This is very dependent upon a few things. So let me give you a few different profiles. Profile A, this is the person who will occasionally shine their shoes and they might or might not put shoe trees in. Uh, they will not avoid the wet and snow. I live in Northeast Ohio, which has snow and then they put salt on the ice and snow to melt it and that salt water mix is terrible for leather. So let's assume they will not avoid that. They will not put galoshes on, you know, like rubber overshoes. Um, and they may wear alternate shoes like some boots or something only in the most severe weather. In other words, the shoes will get exposed to inclement weather. So that's profile A. Profile B is going to be a person who will uh, wear beater shoes or they will wear alternate boots in inclement weather. Uh, they may wear these shoes occasionally in mild salt or snow, but they do have beater shoes that they're, they're going to switch to when the weather gets really bad. Okay. Um, and then profile C is somebody who's willing to, you know, basically be very diligent about wearing beater shoes or boots, not exposing these shoes to salt and snow and is willing to use shoe trees daily. Uh, they will keep their shoes shined and moisturized as well. So they're basically willing to really take care of their shoes. So A, B, C, A is least care, C is the most care. My first tip for you, especially if you're group A, is don't buy one $500 shoe. You're gonna absolutely destroy it. The key here is that you should have at a minimum of two, if not three pairs of shoes, okay? So, minimum of two, what should you get? I would say the first shoe you should get is probably, now this is style dependent, by the way, the exact style you should get is really not as important to me. If you're working in the banking industry, let's just say, the rules are very strict and you live in a big city, you know, the proper type of Oxford, closed lacing system, Oxford may be very important. You know, where uh, is if, let's just say, you're in IT, in a suburban area where most people are wearing sneakers, just by wearing anything, you know, that's dress shoe, you're going to elevate yourself above, you know, most other people. So, but I still think the first shoe should probably be a cap toe, Oxford, no ornamentation, as opposed to something like this. You see, this is a derby with the open flaps. I've got other videos on this and you see the ornamentation. I believe you should have your first shoe as a black cap toe Oxford, because now you've got a shoe you can wear to weddings and interviews, formal occasions, and in other, uh, um, you know, normal events, this isn't going to stand out. You know, in other people, in other words, this won't stand out in their mind. It's a very versatile shoe. I think that should be the first one. Now, your second shoe, for most people, people I tend to see that are not into shoes really like loafers, maybe something like this. This is a tassel. It's not an old man shoe, though, because it's got an apron on it. A nice brown loafer. Maybe something like this. Double monk strap, right? Still something you don't have to tie. Maybe even something more classic, like this is actually a more of an ox blood burgundy color. You know, this would be uh, considered your penny loafer, okay? So I would think that would be the second shoe. Um, and third, my third shoe, I'm going to vote, is something like this. A dress boot with a, like a mini lug, they're kind of dirty, but mini lug sole. You see here, when your pant leg covers it, it kind of looks like a walnut color derby, okay? But you've got the mini lug sole, so now you've got something that's going to elevate you above the snow a little bit more and this is gonna take care of you in bad weather. Um, you know, just a great all around, uh, 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 you know, dressier boot as well, okay? So, if you are profile A, a person's gonna take very little care, here's my suggestions. What I would be getting is, for that first shoe, again, this is not a black cap toe Oxford, but something like this, let me show you the construction. I would probably be looking for something that's corrected green. This particular shoe is a Johnston & Murphy, but you see, I don't know if you can tell, I've got another whole video on this, 
The shoes are actually Blake stitched, but this is a rubber sole. So now you don't have to worry about the moisture getting through a leather sole. You don't have to worry about traction. You don't have to worry about over boots. Something like this with corrected green leather, it's probably not gonna last more than a couple few years before it does crack a little bit, but I think that's gonna be your best bang from the buck. You're probably gonna get something like this for 100 to $150, okay? Does that make sense? This is profile A, you don't really wanna take care of your stuff, right? The shoe's not, a nice, not as nice, like for example, this one being a long wing, you see they have a seam right in the middle, you know, I think it kinda of looks bad, but you're still stepping your game up, okay? Category A again. Now, now this is a floor shine, and these used to be made of full grain leather. I don't think they are anymore. You can get this kind of shoe for, you know, around a hundred bucks. And I put on the protective rubber soles, but if you can see, it looks like leather, but it's not. This is a rubber material that you're gonna have good traction from. It looks like leather. Notice these stitching, by the way. I've done another video on this. Look how large those stitches are and how small those are. That does not connect to that. This sole is glued on, not stitched on as it appears. Those are cosmetic stitches only, but for about a hundred bucks, again, something that's gonna be a little bit better than those 50 to $80 shoes. What you're really getting is it's still bonded rubber sole. This is category A, you're not willing to take care of them, but at least you're getting something that's made of better materials and should last longer. You're still gonna be replacing this every few years, okay? So let me explain here why I'm telling you in category A, average Joe, to get the lower quality leather with the lower quality construction. The bottom line is because the higher quality leather requires more care that you're not gonna give it. Let me explain the difference really quickly here between full grain leather and corrected grain leather. This is an example of full grain leather. If you look very closely, I'll try and get the camera to focus in. You can see there are pores in the leather you can see the pores where the actual hair follicles were in the skin. Full grain leather, or also called full grain aniline leather, wrinkles very nicely. It returns to its shape very well. It's very, usually very long lasting, but there's a disadvantage to it. These are two examples of corrected grain leather. If you see the surface quality, it's very smooth, very uniform. That's because the surface of the skin has been ground down and it's been coated with a plastic. And then what you see is it will basically in my books always eventually, can you see the cracks right there? It's always gonna crack, it's gonna split. I don't know if you can really see them there. This one is much more obvious. This is a Johnston and Murphy. That's gonna happen eventually to it. So now, let me show you the difference between corrected grain and full grain when you apply a little bit of water to the shoe. See there, I've got both of them wetted down along the welt. See the water there? And we're gonna let them sit and see what happens. Now here's the result after about 10 minutes. Let me wipe both of them off. And now you can see here, with the corrected green leather, there's absolutely nothing. You don't see any evidence of it really soaking in, okay? And again, there's those horrible cracks. Now, with the full grain leather, can you see what happened? The water penetrated. Now, you can see these bumps here. Those bumps are not from this, uh, this time, but that's the result of the leather just from even getting wet. It's much worse if you have salt that gets in, right? Like you can see some of the line of bumps right there. That's from the cap toe getting wet. Full grain leather, will absorb stains. And even worse than this, this leather is pretty well polished and conditioned. It absorbs stuff even more readily when it's not polished or conditioned. That's why I would not advise people that are in the average Joe category A that aren't gonna take care of their shoes, aren't gonna protect it from weather, I advise you don't get full grain leather because you're probably just gonna destroy it. Heel construction. Here's another difference between a very cheap shoe and a little better shoe. With a very cheap shoe, well, both of those you see look like stacked leather heels. They appear so. But if you look, this floor shine at about the $100 level, you see that line right there? This is actually just a veneer finish. Many times it's even worse quality than this. Many times you'll see just an injection rubber molded sole with that uh, leather grain finish painted on. This you really can't take care of. You can't do anything with it. It'll rub off, it will scrape off, and then once it does, it's just gonna look terrible. 
compared to this one, which is, uh, it's not actually full leather, it's more like a leather composite material, but this can actually be sanded down, this can be recolored with dye, since it's leather, it takes dye, it takes wax, and you can pretty much, even on this workhorse boot that I beat the crap out of, look how nice they still look, right? So anyway, I hope that kind of makes sense on what you're going to get with a little bit nicer shoe with a real uh, leather, at least a fiberboard or real leather stacked heel base. Category B, where you, category B is that you are willing to take better care of your shoes. They will occasionally be exposed to nasty weather, uh, but you do have boots and or a pair of beater shoes. So like one tip I showed you already, here is the mini lug sole. Now, by the way, you can get shoes even that look like this with the mini lug sole on them. So that's what I would be looking for, is one of your shoes, at least, is something with a mini lug sole on it. So it's a dress shoe, it's going to have a little bit of traction, and also bring the shoe up a little bit more above the nasty weather, okay? Um, what you can also do then, uh, is you can get what's called a chukka boot. Um, I'll give you a couple examples here of chukka boots is something that you could get, and that's going to be something here that you know, keeps your foot, uh, uh, the shoe upper a little bit above the nasty weather. And now you have something to rotate with. And then of course you have your cap toe Oxford for the better weather. Now, you can also take them to a cobbler and have something like this. This is a leather soled shoe. Now all of Allen Edmonds shoes are available. I don't have an example here, but with rubber soles, like day night rubber soles, but you can also have these protective rubber half soles added over top of your leather soled shoes. Now you don't have to worry as much about wet weather with leather soled shoes. That's another tip. Now the difference here for category B, because you're willing to not expose your shoes as much to bad weather, let me show you why this is important. This pair of dress boots for me, these are my kind of my beater boots. Uh, these I'll wear these to like, you know, outdoor range uh, where I go out with the guys and I wore these out in April in Ohio and it was very muddy. They got directly exposed to water and I hit them with saddle soap and I kind of cleaned them up a little bit. But do you see there, it's kind of like wrinkly. I'm gonna try to get it in the light. It's, it's actually bubbled, leather bubbles a little bit. You see there, that's not a crack. And that's from exposure to moisture, right? So the point is these shoes, I don't care, okay? These aren't my good shoes, these are my beater shoes, okay? But if you're willing to have a pair of beater shoes that these are the ones you're gonna let them get exposed to the bad weather, now you can start getting some nicer shoes. Now what I would be doing is I would be stepping up in this category to like an Allen Edmonds. Now Allen Edmonds, most of their shoes are $395 as of the release of this video on uh, of their full regular price. Allen Edmonds to me is like Joseph A. Banks. You don't ever pay full price for Joseph A. Banks suits, never. They're almost always on sale. So Allen Edmonds, um, the ones I've gotten new, Again, $3.95 full retail. New first quality from Allen Edmonds, I've paid $3.15, $2.45, $2.25, and even $97. Those were not factory seconds, although they did have some flaws. But the $97 ones, by the way, were these Atchison's. Um, so what I'm saying is, to me, Allen Edmonds is more like a two to $300 shoe is really what it is. It's about a $250 shoe, depending on the style. So now you're able to get the better quality leather because you're not going to expose your nicer shoes. Now you can get something like this, full grain leather. It's very beautiful, and especially in the lighter colors, if you're gonna keep them out of the nasty weather. Now you can get the better quality full grain leathers, Goodyear welted sole, it can be resold, and these will last you years, if not decades, as long as you do a couple things. Number one, keep them polished and moisturized. Number two, religiously put shoe trees in them. You do those couple things, and then number three, keep them out of the nasty weather, the, you know, the very wet, and especially salt. They should last you many, many years. Here's another tip for everybody. I learned this when I first got into nice shoes. Number one, don't wear the same dress shoe two days in a row. That's why I say the bare minimum you should have is two, but more like three shoes, then you can rotate. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, again, another uh, example. You see those pores? That's full grain leather. It's beautiful variation in color. But again, full grain leather is more susceptible to water and especially salt water. Don't expose these to salt water, okay? But if you're willing to go to that level, now you can get the nicer shoes. And they're gonna last a lot longer, okay? Once you have your black cap toe Oxford, here's another couple styles that you could buy. You can get something like this as your second shoe, wingtip. This one's actually black with a, you know, tan sole. It might be black with a black, it might be a, a you know, ox blood color, you might get a traditional brown color, but this could be your second shoe. If your black cap to Oxford is your first one, the second shoe I would probably get more of a traditional brown 
for a burgundy ox blood color, okay? Uh, that burgundy ox blood is very, very versatile. Now, but this shoe, this is a double oak sole. It's gonna get you a little bit higher above the, the wet and stuff like that, especially if you get it with a rubber sole. Uh, this one has a leather sole with a you know protective half sole on it, but if you get it with a rubber sole, this is gonna be more weatherproof. And they see that lip, it's called a storm welt. That lip there that sticks up also keeps the upper a little bit drier. That would be a great second shoe, especially for category B and C. Your second shoe might also be something like this in brown, a derby, uh, you know, with some broguing medallion in brown, not black. Okay. Here's another option for category B. The uppers are full grain leather. This is an Allen Edmonds Cornwallis, but here's the sole I want to show you. This is called a combination tap sole. You see, this is not a rubber protective half sole. This is part of the sole from the factory. Rubber and leather, so the part that touches the ground, now you don't have to worry about uh, slipping. You know, you don't have to worry about water attacking the leather. Okay, combination sole is another good option for category B. Now, here's a few examples. This is as of the release of this video, which is May of 2022. First of all, here's johnstonmurphy.com and look what pops up right away. You see here? 10% off your first purchase. I would absolutely do these. Put your email address in, get your 10%. If you're spending a couple hundred bucks, that could be 20 bucks. You buy a couple shoes, you could easily save 40 bucks, okay? In the men's shoes, I went to lace-ups. I hit sole type combination and rubber. Let's just avoid leather. And then let's sort by price high to low. That way we're gonna eliminate the, you know, the kind of this stuff that's really junky. Now, here's the Sayer. Full retail price, 199. I imagine you can get it for, for less than that. And if we look here, it is a leather lining. It's a leather sole, leather rubber heel. So this is a leather sole and it looks like it's probably bonded. If it doesn't say Goodyear welted or doesn't say Blake stitched, then you can pretty much be assured it's not, right? Now here's the Mead cap tone. Now Mead 189, I'm sure you can get it for less than that. And this one also does come in a brown color. Uh, but with a black cap toe here, it shows a leather rubber combo sole. You can see here in the middle. Although it doesn't say over here whether it is Blake stitched or not. This may be actually Blake stitched um, and those may be cosmetic stitches. I don't actually know. If you're in category B and on more of a budget, here's a couple good options. Now here I went to floorshime.com and they had a clearance sale and I clicked on what they have in the clearances. I picked a couple. Here is a weird name annuity, but this is the plain toe chukka boot. You see it's got a couple laces, the boot, it's a little bit thicker sole. Only downside here is it is a leather sole, but if you look, do you see what that says? That says flexible Goodyear welted. And if you look in the description, this is a Goodyear welted shoe. So that's a great thing. Although again, it is a leather sole. But look at this, it's $159, oh, let's call it 160. Here's another option. Annuity cap toe Oxford. Again, Goodyear welted with a leather sole. What I would do, um, is I might spring for this if I were on a budget. Now watch, uh, use code SMILE at checkout, and it comes out to $135, right? You know, so the other shoe is gonna probably come out to like 140, something like that, 145. That's a really a pretty good deal, and if it were me, um, and I were category B, I would probably take uh, this chuck -a boot especially, straight to the cobbler, and when I took it to the cobbler, I would have them put, uh, you know, like at least a rubber protective half sole, if not a Vibram mini lug sole, like you saw that I added onto those boots, uh, as well as the heel to match. When you put on a thicker a sole, anything thicker than about an eighth of an inch, you need to put a thicker heel on the match. So the cobbler would take off that rubber heel and, uh, you know, probably for about 30 bucks or 40 bucks or something like that, add on the Vibram mini lug heel, add on the mini lugs to the toes and, you know, for less than 200 bucks, you have a pretty cool shoe. So um, that might be what I would do. If I were category B for this one, what I would do is after I get the shoe, leave the heel alone, it's all rubber. Uh, but I would have, I do it myself, but I would have a cobbler just to the toe area, uh, add in a rubber protective half. So something really thin, like, uh, you know, one and a half millimeter. So you can see here, here's that annuity cap to Oxford and that chuck -a boot And you got both of them, uh, extra 10% off with that code, 280 bucks. That's not bad. Now, here's my favorite brand, Allen Edmonds. Allen Edmonds is fabulous, especially if you have wide uh, or narrow, non-standard width feet. I don't know if you can see here up at the top, but it says save up to 60% off with sale code SALE25. This is a Memorial Day sale, and they just actually ended another sale, you know, a couple weeks ago. So like I said, they're generally almost always on sale. So now let's go here to shoes, 
and then all dress shoes under men's. And let's see what kind of prices I have, okay? Fifth Avenue, quarter brogue. You can see here that you have the broguing around at the back of the cap toe, makes it a little less formal. And then also this color. This color is called bourbon. It's similar to the walnut, but a little darker, a little more of a copper color, beautiful color. Um, and if you can see here, there's no other color options available. That's because of the sale price. So at that sale price, that's all they have. And also look, there's very few sizes available. You know, so, and very few widths. So the sales, those huge discount prices, you know, this is half price basically. You're often not going to get a very good selection, okay? But that being said, uh, this shoe, what's good about it here is uh, this is a classic style. It's got the classic leather sole, um, but let's here look real quick to see. So I just did a search for Fifth Avenue and let's see what comes up. Uh, this is the Fifth Avenue in Mahogany, and here you can see it's available in basically all of their sizes and all of their widths at the $300 price point. That would be a fair buy for this one. Although that one does have the leather sole on it. Now here's the same shoe, except with a day-night rubber sole. Let me show you what that looks like. Now you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, walking through water, or mud puddles, or, or stuff like that. Um, and 329 if I were category B, I would pay $29 extra for the day-night sole. Uh, but if this is not your first shoe, I would probably avoid that uh, black. I probably would avoid the walnut too. The lighter colors are just a little touchier with spilling things on. I would probably either go for dark chili. This is a brown with a hint of red in it um, or the coffee brown. The coffee brown is going to be more of a traditional brown color, right? I think that would be a good choice for my second shoe if you like that closed lacing style Oxford. Again, with the day-night rubber sole. Here's a little more casual, a little bit different. This is gonna have more visual difference from your cap toe Oxford. The downside to the quarter brogue that I just showed you, the Fifth Avenue, is it's still a cap toe. It, this is more dissimilar. Now you see you have the wing tip, right? So you can see the comes down. It's very different, visually stunning. This is more casual because of the material and the sole. Uh, and again, only limited, very uh, limited sizes here, but it is 200 bucks. Uh, so you can see here, it's got that uh, uh, reddish colored day-night rubber sole on it. You can also get this in black and same thing, we're very limited on sizes. This is kind of interesting though. Again, more casual, more fun because it's got the blue sole on it. Here's another option, $200 price point, is you have, this is suede, so now you don't have to worry about polishing it. This is, uh, you know, another option here. And this also has that lug sole on it. So what do they call this? I don't know what they call it, but and now you've got something that's gonna get your foot a little bit higher up above the muck, you see, but still not look out of place in a dress environment. But again, more casual shoe here. This is like a business casual shoe, not a, not a business professional shoe. I would probably not wear this with a suit, unless this was like a networking event where you're going like with a suit with a brightly colored shirt and no tie, you know, where you're dressing it down. And here, this is a very interesting option, I would say. Uh, strand weather proof, cap toe Oxford. So this is be, this would be considered a semi-brogue. Um, the walnut color is just absolutely beautiful. And look at this, it comes with a day-night rubber sole. And the leather uppers on this one, they say weatherproof and they have that symbol. It's been treated with something, and especially at 280 bucks, I think it's a great buy, but ugh, who wears a size five and a half? You know, but if you're willing to wait a little bit, you can look to see this go on sale. You could probably get this for low to mid threes, I'm gonna guess, okay? Here's another good option, Strand Mock. Now you see what the, this is different is the texture on the leather. If you can see there, uh, it has this textured material here. This makes it more casual. So this is not as formal, okay? And this also has that day-night rubber sole, so you're good for the inclement weather. And the 249 bucks, 250 bucks, well, only available in a couple sizes. That's not bad. Now for category C, this really opens things up because now if you're willing to take care of the shoes better, you know, we can move into the more classic traditional leather. Now this is getting a little snobbier, uh, but there are people that really pay attention to dress shoes that only want the leather. They'll actually look, I do this too, but you know, you look at people when they're walking away from you and you look at the bottom of their shoe to see if it's leather. And there's a little bit of a status thing you know I mean probably nobody that does that would ever admit to somebody that's not into shoes that they look at that but you know there is that factor but if you're willing to do that here is something called the Kenilworth uh, so this is called a plain toe blucher it's kind of cool because it's only got three laces a little bit of visual difference on it higher quality leather it's really beautiful uh, this is the bond street it's got that tap sole so you you know rubber inset into it so you still got some uh, traction you know uh, you got the quarter rubber heel here um, and then here's something called Cavanaugh. Here's a nice traditional penny loafer, again, with the uh, leather sole, okay? 
The weaves I would not do for somebody in their category, uh, if you are category A or B, uh, just because they're a little more delicate. You can hit those against something and tear them. That's something I say only for category C, that style. Now, if you're category B, here's some great choices. For example, the Fifth Avenue Cap Toe Oxford Day Night. Okay, so when we click on this though, I wanna show you something because it's a little bit confusing the way they have this worded. If you look at the tippy top here, right, it says, save up to 60% off sale with code SALE25. So if you go to this and you click on that, okay, what's gonna happen is I just spoke with the store to understand this better. Now what comes up, all I did was I click on that and what comes up here is basically all the shoes that are on sale. Now let's just say I leave it on featured. So the higher price one, so let's find something day night. So let me go over here and let's go to soles and let's go rubber, let's go lug, uh, day night and combination. In other words, let's avoid the tap sole because you're category B, right? You don't wanna wear necessarily galoshes and things like that. Let's do this one, 329, the McTavish with this lug sole, that's kind of cool. If I were to put this in my cart, see all the sizes, I would get 11 and a half triple E, only a few left, and add to the cart. Now, view my cart. Now I've got it in the cart. By the way, extra 25% off. How did I get that? I got that because I typed in, can you see here? I typed in sale 25 right here. Sale 25 like it said at the top to do, and that brought the price down to, for this Fifth Avenue, in day night, down to 247, and this brought the McTavish also down to 247 bucks. So are you willing to pay a little bit more and take a little bit better care? This is literally a shoe that if you take care of it, it's gonna, you're gonna get years, if not decades out of, if you do what I told you and rotate them. I think this is really the way to go and you have a much more beautiful shoe in the process. Does that kind of make sense? So I did another search here and I'm searching for only black. Uh, I'm searching for only shoes, not boots. A leather or waterproof leather, no suede, rubber soles, day-night soles, combination soles, in other words, no leather, right? And from that list here, uh, this narrows it down to, for example, the Fifth Avenue, you know? Uh, e even though that's got some broguing across the toe, I think you can get away with that. I don't think anybody, you know, under most circles is gonna complain. Here we go. Here's the Fifth Avenue. This differs from the Park Avenue and it's got the broguing across the toes. If you're anything but the most strict environment, uh, you know, you're outside of like banking, finance, or law, I think you'd be totally fine with this. I think most people wouldn't notice that it's got those holes, but now you've got all the sizes and widths available. So I hope that kind of helped. There's so many options out there. I know it can be difficult. So basically just uh, break it down to see which category, which category are you, A, B, or C. Make some appropriate choices in those ranges and then don't rush out. You know, look for the sales, wait. You don't need to have this all in one day. And here's another thing. I was told this a long time ago, don't skimp on your shoes or the bed you sleep on because you spend most of your life either in bed or on your feet, okay? Uh, last tip I'll give you is with Allen Edmonds, if at all possible, go to the store, right? Pick online, narrow it down to five, six, seven, you know, different styles of shoes that you like. Make sure, unless you know for sure what your Allen Edmonds size is in a certain last, uh, then make sure you get fitted at the store, okay? Plan on not being able to take the exact shoe home that day because if they have seven different colors and three different widths, right, for every size, what is that, like, you know, 21 possible combinations. So you pick the exact size and width that fits you well, and then generally speaking, they're gonna ship it from the factory. So number one, make sure that you buy Allen Edmonds shoes by getting number one, fitted at the store. Uh, number two, if you already know your size for sure, still purchase through the store. Don't purchase just through the internet. You can call the individual store, give them the shoe model number and size over the phone, give them a credit card, and that store gets sale credit. We want those brick and mortar stores around. Getting fitted for people that don't know their exact size, which is most people, is critical, okay? Tip number three, don't have the ship shoe shipped to your house. There have been some legitimate uh, concerns with Allen Edmonds quality in recent years. Have the shoe shipped to the store if it's not more than a couple hours away. And then when it comes in, go pick it up at the store, inspect it at the store with the uh, store personnel. If you have any problems, make sure you return through the store now, not directly, don't call Calaris, the parent company. Does that make sense? 
I hope that kind of helps. I don't get paid by Allen Edmonds at this point, okay? I, I'd love it if I could, but uh, I just really am a raving fan of their shoes, especially being a triple E with. Uh, but I hope this brought you some value. And if you did like the content, please click that little like button below and please consider subscribing to my channel. All right, thank you very much. God bless. By the way, you're going to see here that I didn't talk a lot about the Connoisseur and what they should get. That's because primarily the Connoisseur does not need direction. They've established their desires and their style, and they're going to find out independently what they really want and what they like. I'm rolling here some different examples of some different shoes that I've had owned or wear. And, uh, you know, I use Allen Edmonds a lot just so I can give you some concrete examples and show you the pricing and what you get for that pricing. Go out there and explore the different styles. For example, these vintage floor shimes that I sold myself. So the Polo Ralph Lauren's and the Cobbler Union shoes both have narrowed waists with what's called hidden channel stitching. The Cobbler Unions actually have a fiddleback waist. Those are features that are absolutely gorgeous, but probably don't mean a whole lot to people that are category A and B and do require a lot of extra care. I have a pair of shoes on order from them that I'm going to be reviewing soon. So get out there and explore all those different amazing styles. God bless.